Welcome to another video and happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for all the good things that are happening in my life and in your life too. And if you don't think something good is happening, just wait. You're going to see it soon. So let's look at this basic example of um, finding the derivative of a function from first principles. First principles means you're not going to be using any technique other than the definition of the derivative. So uh, what that means is this is the part of calculus that many calculus students don't like because here you have to know how to do your algebraic manipulation. So Let's get into the video. So generally, this is how you start this kind of um, derivation. You're going to say that um, let f of x be equal to a to the x. I know I've covered the series on many types of functions, but someone reminded me, reminded me that I never did for exponential function um, with a different base. So I'm just going to do it. Um, because we know that if this is e, then the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. But what about this one? It's not e. What, what's going to be the derivative from first principles? Now, um, so if f of x is a to the x, we know that f prime of x from the definition of the derivative is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Do you recall this? Okay, so this is what we're going to apply to this function and we're going to see what our answer turns out turns out to be. So let's go. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, this is the function, this is our f of x, but we want to find f of x plus h, so it's going to be a to the x plus h minus, what is f of x? It's the same function, a to the x, and everything divided by h. So, what can you do that this could be frustrating if you don't know what to do next? That's why it's good to practice. So now looking at this, usually when you have exponential functions, it's always good to do some factoring because there's nothing you can do to two exponential functions um, with an arithmetic sign like plus or minus between them. So if I factor out the smaller, you see, this is smaller than this because x plus h, h is definitely some positive number. We don't usually say it, but it's the distance. And because it's a distance, it's positive. So this is smaller than this. So I'm going to factor this from both because this contains this, contains this also. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, if I factor a to the x, I'm going to end up with a to the x. So remember, factoring is the same thing as dividing. So if you factor this out of this, you have divided this by a to the x, you have the h left. So you're going to have a to the h. And that's all that's left. Because if you multiply these two together, you're going to come back to this. Minus, this is 1, because we've divided this by a to the x. And the bottom is still there, divided by h. So you're going to ask me, what advantage do I gain doing this? Well, there's a major advantage because we've come to the end of the exercise. Why? Because this limit is in terms of h. This guy does not have any h involved in it. And I can apply the product rule for limit that the limit of a product is the product of the limit. So I can rewrite this as the limit as h goes to 0 of a to the x multiplied by the limit as h goes to 0 of a to the h minus 1 
divided by h. Okay, what does that do for me? Well, the limit of a... Now, relative to h, this is a constant because there's no h involved in this. So my answer is basically a to the x. Because even if h goes to anything, this is going to stay as a to the x. There's no a in h involved. But when I get here, I get a limit. What really is this limit? That's the whole point of this video. You need to know this as a calculus student. Okay, the answer to this is the natural log of A. <laughs> okay, so the natural log of anything has two standard definitions. One as an integral, the second as a limit. So, let me tell you, look, let me just write this. Recall that the natural log of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. Now, you just perform this integral, you'll end up with ln of x as your final answer. This is the integral definition, and this is the most common definition that we know. However, there is a second one, which is the limit definition of, just as we have a limit definition for e to the x. Remember, e to the 1 is blah, 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 right? 1 plus 1 over n raised to power n as n goes to infinity, remember? Yeah, so for the natural log also, this has a definition. Where do I write it? I can also say ln of x is equal to the limit. Okay, so I'm going to switch this to um, whatever. I can use t. Okay, since I use t here, I can use t also. So let me ask t goes to 0 of x raised to power t minus 1 over t. Do you see it? So whatever is here as the base, if you have this as the exponent minus 1, and that same thing is the denominator, and that's what's going to 0, just as you have in this definition, then all you're calculating is ln x. So here, what we're calculating is ln a. So the final answer to this is a to the x ln of a. This is the derivative of a to the x from first principles using the definition of the natural log of x, natural log definition. Check. Check. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.